Welcome to my Secret Place Devotion with Oyix Alfred. The Word of God is alive and equipped to change your life. Good morning. First Peter 5, 7 is such a beautiful scripture. It says, give all your worries and cares to God for he cares for you. So do you have any worry or any concern? It doesn't matter how complicated that particular worry is. The Bible says, don't leave it with you. Put it in the hands of God. And the reason you're doing it is simply because God really, really cares for you. Thank you so much, Lord, for this wonderful scripture you've put in the word. I pray for your people and I lift up every worry, every concern, Lord. I ask for speedy answers. I ask for comfort. I ask for restoration on the life of your people in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, whenever we read that popular scripture about Satan in 1 Peter 5 verse 8, that scripture says from the New Living Translation, it says, Stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Whenever we read the scripture, we typically think of Satan trying to harass our business, harass our lives, destroy our property, or kill us. But you know what? That thought process hinders us from seeing Satan's major game plan of deception. So typically you're thinking, no, I'm very sure that I'm not deceived. Well, most people say that because they don't understand the various elements of deception. Deception comes in different ways. So typically if you read your Bible, say for some time, you say, oh no, Satan cannot deceive me. But you don't understand that one of the elements of deception or one of the types of deception is when you receive a one-sided gospel. When some parts of the gospel is kept away from you, what that means is that you're being deceived by removing an, a critical element of the gospel. Imagine if you produce a medication for people who are not feeling very well. For each medication, there is a major active ingredient. So if you are able to produce that medication and you remove the active e- ingredient, that particular medicine cannot help anybody though all the other elements are there it will still not be useful because the main active ingredient in that particular pill is missing and that is what typically happens so some parts of the gospel have been silenced in this 21st century a perfect example would be hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 where the bible talks about holiness you see that message of holiness is almost missing today it's very rare to hear someone talk about holiness but see how important it is the bible tells us in hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 he says make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy without holiness no one will see the law now I, I believe that jesus is serious about this verse of scripture he says make every effort to live at peace with all men in other words do whatever it takes put in your best do everything to make sure you are living at peace with everyone there must be no quarrel in your heart with anyone that's number one then number two he now talks about holiness he said without holiness no i will see the lord so you cannot be spiritually irresponsible living in sin telling lies at will being fraudulent you know allowing anger resentment bitterness anger jealousy all those things to stay in your heart and you're not praying about it you're not walking towards getting those things out of your life you can't live that kind of life and expect to see the lord actually the standards of god are actually very high That is why he gave us the Holy Spirit to help us, you know, to deal with those things in our lives that are not meant to be there. That is why the grace of God is released to help us to live holy lives. Let's look at what God said concerning grace. In Titus 2.11, he says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live spirit-controlled upright and godly lives in this present age so the bible says the reason the grace of god has appeared is to teach us to say no to ungodliness so the grace of god has been released so that you can say no remember this scripture didn't say so that god can help you say no the bible says you have been given the ability to say no if you are not given the ability to say no then there's no need for the bible to tell you to say no so grace and you to say no i refuse to continue lying no i refuse to continue living in adultery or whatever it is that you know that is not right so if you have those issues in your life you go to the person of the holy spirit and the bible tells us the job of the holy spirit in dealing with sin 
Romans 8 13 says, For if you live by the dictates of the flesh, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. So, what is the role of the Holy Spirit? What He does is when you take an aspect of your life to Him in the place of prayer, you recognize, okay, let's assume you're dealing with lust, for instance. And one of the things you need to do is in your place of prayer, Holy Spirit, the Bible says that I will put to death the deeds of the sinful nature through you. I ask you to approve this. Is kill the desire for this in my life, Lord. I don't want it in my life. Nullify, mortify, deaden these desires in me in the name of Jesus. As you pray that prayer, the power of the Holy Spirit is deadening the desire for those things in you. So you now have the ability to now say, no, I'm not going to do this. Remember, it's a partnership. There's a part you are going to play, which is deciding in your heart, I'm not going to live an unholy life. And then you go to God in a place of prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to deaden and mortify the deeds of the flesh in your life. That is how it works. Let's see it in King James Version. It says, For if you live after the flesh, you will die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. So the Bible is saying that the Holy Spirit will help us to mortify. What does it mean to mortify? Is to kill, is to deaden. So you get up and you don't even have the desire to sin again. So it's a partnership between you and the Holy Spirit. You play your part like I already said. You decide this is not what I'm going to continue doing in my life. I want to walk the life of holiness and purity because I want to make heaven and I want to please the Lord in the process of doing that. And you make a decision. You go to God in the place of prayer. Ask for the Holy Spirit to deaden the desires in you. You keep praying you daily until you notice that some of those desires and the lust of the flesh and all of those things that do not please God, all of those sinful things begin to drop off gradually until you notice that ah i no more lie oh my goodness lost is gone and all that and you will be that man or woman of holiness that is going to see the lord at the end of this season on our planet and we'll close our eyes here but we're going to open it somewhere else those who have lived holy lives will make heaven those who have not lived holy lives will be in hell but that will not be your portion in the name of jesus thank you so much for listening have a blessed day ahead remember god truly and deeply cares for you for other life-changing messages you can now download the app rev oyik speaks from play store for android phone users or apple store for ios users you can also follow us on instagram youtube and telegram all on the handle oyik's alfred (music) 